what are your biggest inspirations um well influences in regards to your actual work in and of itself well i have a i have a lot of influences believe it or not um it depends on what angle you know you know i'm looking at it as because i look at things so different sometimes but we already know the uh you know uh stanley's uh jack kirby's of the world you know that that was a major influence because i grew up reading that uh uh, I grew up going to a uh, box theater, watching movies, the Shaw brothers, you know, you guys got manga and all that. We had the Shaw brothers back then, which was live action. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I grew up watching a lot of that. I was entertained by a lot of the, uh, master being killed, you know, and the student have to avenge him consistently <laughs> in all the stories. Yeah. But needless to say, I grew up on that. You look at uh, music was a great influence on me as well because, you know, when I started getting into uh, doing my comics, you got to think that was during the time of conscious hip hop. Uh, and when that, you know, that just not sent me over the edge, but it sent me over the edge to what I felt that I needed to do with comics at the time. You know, uh, different textbooks that I was reading, uh, I still have to this day some. And a lot of information that I was just reading was just, you know, just just boiling in my head. It had to go somewhere. I just couldn't hold that information within. So the thing that I was always taught or I've always learned was, you know, when you have information, you just can't hoard the information. You got to find a way to, you know, share that information. So I know the average person, you know, is not going to read textbooks to understand anything. You know, we get enough of that through K through 12. So once we pass that, we really don't want to be bothered anymore. But needless to say, I found another way to express a story or express culture through um, the comic books. No one was really doing that back in in the uh, 90s, even those that I had uh, spoke of that that I was you know greatly appreciative to meeting. They weren't doing conscious comics or whatever. Mm. You did have a few individuals that were out there back then, but I didn't really know much about them or of them. I never met them before. Uh, but some of the stories was similar, but not mine was more superhero based as far as what I do. Uh, I think the brother, he did a comic book called Hey Rule, which was cool. I he only did one in, one installation of it. And, uh, and mine is kind of similar to that, but mine was superhero based and, you know, that was a big influence, but the influence come from what I wasn't seeing, though, to be honest. That's where mm -hmm. it came from. You know, even though I did meet a lot of brothers, a few brothers that was doing black comics, um, I didn't see what I was looking for in the comics. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to try another angle, and that's what the route that I went. And um, people tell you, Dreadlocks is truly very hardcore in the early days. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> you know, once again, I tell you, edutainment, hip-hop, Karis one, Chuck D. Just think of the the the, the one uh, CD they or tape back then that they made, Fear of the Black Planet. That's mm -hmm. what Dread Locks was all about when it first started. Uh, and I, you know, I ended up calming him down quite a bit through time, but still, the message is still the same. And that's important to mention. Um, and that's what made me so interested in this interview is because using our voice is so important. And I think that's something that we could learn from original creators, like me, myself, being on the younger end of the spectrum, mm -hmm. is how much you guys actually pull from other sources as fans, of course, but also to tell a story that you want to see, like it's actually you expressing yourself. So I would actually ask you, what advice would you give younger creators, manga, comics, music, whatever? What would be some some tips that you would give us? Well, number one, I always like to tell everybody to stay true to their craft. That's I always tell anybody to stay true to their craft. Craft, and also, uh, as you point out, I pointed out a little bit earlier. You know, grab those straws from everything that you're involved with. Mm -hmm. Each straw is going to teach you something. You just got to break it and learn from it. Mm -hmm. Whether it's music, because music has different messages in it, you pick up and learn off the music. Uh, okay, I can kind of add something to this, and I gotta have a serious story with this right here. Uh, look at the artwork that's out there. Learn from the different artists that are out there. Learn from the different story, story writers out there. And, you know, basically develop your own craft. And once you develop your own craft, 
you will stay true to it because that's your love. Your craft is yours. There's no one else's. Once you do it, you put it out there, people will start gravitating to it. The thing is, you just have to stay focused and not be discouraged. Uh, you know, it's a lot of things out here that can discourage us and doing comics, manga, um, even prints or whatever. Uh, you know, we get that a lot out here, but that's that should never stop us <laughs> at all. But a lot of us get, once we get discouraged, we just sit back in and uh, say, I'm not doing this anymore. Mm -mm. Doesn't well, work like days. that. I have it once yeah. a week. <laughs> <laughs> 